Thank God you're here because today we're coming to you from our old hometown of Philadelphia. And after years of living in Denmark, this video makes a lot of sense because we're going to be talking about reverse culture shock. Now, reverse culture shock is the feeling when you go back to the place that you came from and you don't quite fit in. You've changed, they've changed, and suddenly you feel kind of like you don't fit in in the two places that you live in, the place you live in now and the place that you used to live in. So as we talk about some of our experiences of reverse culture shock, during the five years since we first moved to Denmark, we're gonna be walking from two iconic landmarks in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, where we're standing now, to Love Park at the other end of Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Yeah, we hope you get to see a really cool side of the city that we love, Philadelphia. And it's going to be really fun taking you down through our city. Let's go. Okay, we've moved just a little bit from where we started, and we're still at the Art Museum at one of the lower levels, overlooking the Rocky statue, made famous from the movies of the same name that came out in the 70s and 80s. And as you can see, it's surrounded by tours waiting to take a photo with the statue. And that's the thing about reverse culture shock. Once you move away, when you come home, you almost feel like a tourist in your own town. Yeah, it's a really weird feeling for the place that you used to live in. Now it doesn't feel like the same as it was when you left. And that's one of the challenges is that people have moved on. Things have changed since you went. But for you, you're stuck in that moment of time when you left. So for us, Philadelphia is always going to be late 2016, early 2017. And what we have to realize is that people have moved on since then. They live their lives. And so your friends have new relationships or new friend groups or new inside jokes that you're maybe not a part of. And you can feel like a tourist even with your own friends because things have changed. And obviously you're not part of their day to day like you were in the past. And it's easy to take for granted that things are going to be there when you come back. For us, it's kind of sad to see that some of our favorite bars and coffee shops and even restaurants have changed or closed. And we come home and people say, where do you want to go to dinner when you're in Philadelphia? And we don't even know good restaurants anymore because so much has changed. Uh, but it's still home. And I think that's the lesson is that you need to be prepared that life goes on without you. But when you are back, embrace that change and you get to know a new side of something that's very familiar. Yeah, one of the ways to cope with it is to get to be a tourist in your hometown. Those are things that you kind of never do that are kind of touristic when you live in a place. And so we found that when we come back to Philly, we can do kind of touristy things and it helps us reconnect with the city that we love. I don't know if we're going to go take a, a photo with Rocky, though. No, that's, that's okay. a little that's a, too tourist. It's a little cliche. Yeah. So one of the other challenges of reverse culture shock is realizing when you come back that maybe you're not as interesting as you think you are. I mean, obviously you have tales and stories of wherever you live abroad, but at the same time, you're just Mike and Derek coming back. And so some of the stories that you tell might be interesting, but not as interesting as you think. And you can feel like you should be maybe a little bit more of a celebrity sometimes, but when you come home, you're just you. Yeah, and it's a little bit of a hard truth, but when it comes down to it, People don't necessarily want to hear all about what it's like living in Denmark all the time. I mean, maybe you do if you're watching this channel, but your friends back home might get kind of sick of hearing you talk about your fantastic life abroad if you're not also asking them about what's going on in their life's home. Yeah, I think it's important to, that's a really good point, where making sure that you realize like everyone has a life that's interesting and, and sharing in that. And be sure that you really engage in other people as well because sometimes you can also come across as a little bit maybe condescending if you start talking just about yourself and how amazing your life abroad is. You just still have a life to live and share what you have but make sure you learn from other people what their lives are doing here as well. They're interesting too. Yep, and it's also a good thing to remember that just because you're home doesn't mean that everybody's going to drop everything to come hang out with you. So it has to be also a little bit of a, an ego check uh, as well that the reverse culture shock that you're feeling um, is perfectly normal, but you're maybe not as interesting as you think you are. Okay, another part of reverse culture shock that we experience after living in Denmark and coming back to visit friends and family in the United States is that the culture is very materialistic. It's almost overwhelming how much abundance of commercial items are available. It's nice to have consumer goods available. And selection in Denmark, there's not always as many things in the grocery store as far as selections. Of course, everything you need is available, but there's just so many more options in the US and it can be a bit overwhelming to get used to again. Yeah, and one of the other things that we really notice when we come back is just how many ad impressions you get on any given moment. There's advertising everywhere and things are always in your face. Commercials are in your face. You're kind of always being sold something when you come here. And in Denmark, the culture is not quite as much that where you don't see as much advertising all over the place. You don't see commercials all over the place on, on TV and the like. So it's a little bit of a different shock for us here. Yeah, I mean, people even make fun of uh, how much American television has 
commercials. It's, you know, five minutes of commercials three or four times in a 30 minute uh, episode of Friends. It's a little bit crazy. Um, and we really realize that when we make the, the move and, and uh, come back to visit the United States. And yeah, one of the other things that you notice is there's political stuff everywhere. So many cars have bumper stickers, either hating on Trump or loving Trump. And when you drive around in the suburbs, people have signs in their yard for Biden or for Trump or for whatever their personal passion happens to be. Yeah. You don't see nearly as much of that in Denmark, but here politics is always in your face. Yeah. Six months after the election, there's still <laughs> yard signs up everywhere. all over because people want you to know what team they're on politically. Yeah. And it can be, uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit hard to get used to. Yeah. And one of the other things that we really notice here is on the abundance side is you always get so much. Like when you go out to restaurants, we went to, to brunch the other day and I literally only ate half my plate because they give you so much food. There's an expectation. In the US, you never want to be the restaurant where people walk away saying, mm, I walked away a little bit hungry. The portions weren't, weren't big enough for me. Yeah, so overall, it's just that it can be difficult in reverse culture shock experience when you come back by just how much commercialism, consumerism, materialistic and abundance and overabundance of just everything there is in the US. One of the other culture clashes that we finally come back to the States is that the US is a chatty, chatty culture. In Denmark, there really are no interactions between strangers because why would you talk to a stranger? You're not going to talk to somebody in line at the grocery. You're not going to strike up a conversation with somebody sitting on a train. In the U.S., it's the opposite. We can't stand silence. That's going to shock back to us coming back because we're not used to it anymore. And look, th there's regional differences in Denmark. I don't want to make an absolute statement that sure. nobody ever talks to. But in the U.S., it's almost constant that people feel like if you make eye contact, you're trying to start a conversation. And that can be a bit overwhelming and ah, it takes a little bit of getting used to again. Yeah, one of the places you really see it is when you're interacting with like customers. So obviously in restaurants, there's the tipping culture in the US. So, rest, well, so waiters and waitresses are always going to be extra chatty and nice to try and get a bigger tip. But even in places where there is no tipping, places or things where it'd be a much more transactional, here's your ticket for the train, is going to be a lot more chatty and friendly in the US just because we believe here that the customer is king and so you get treated like royalty. Yeah, and it can be nice in doses, but sometimes you just want your ticket to the train or you just want your cup of coffee and you don't feel like having a drawn out conversation. Yeah. Americans have this like weird ability to fill in every gap of conversation or every bit of silence with conversation and small talk that isn't really even necessary and doesn't add anything to the overall conversation <laughs> or the overall experience or interaction that you're trying to have. And that can be a lot. It can be a lot. Hey, one of the things you, want, you probably noticed behind us is you see Rodin's The Thinker, and that's because we're standing in front of the Rodin Museum. One of the neat things about Philadelphia is the Benjamin Franklin Parkway that runs from City Hall to the Art Museum was inspired with the Champs-Élysées in Paris, and the concept was for it to be lined with all kinds of museums and cultural attractions to raise the cultural level of Philadelphia. This is one of the great examples here. Yeah, so if you do want to find somewhere where you can get away and <laughs> not talk to anybody and just admire some peaceful art in uh, the privacy of your own thoughts and mind, you can do that here at the Rodin Museum. Another part of reverse culture shock is realizing that you end up with a bit of a values clash when you go back. Obviously, when you move to a new place, you change a little bit. Where you live influences you. And for us, obviously, living in Denmark for four and a half years has changed some of our values and how we see it about the world because we've lived in Denmark and shared in that culture for the last four and a half years. Yeah, and as we start to adopt more things that are common in Danish society, it makes us feel a little bit like outsiders when we come back to the U.S. An interesting thing as well is that a lot of Americans have opinions about Denmark because the Nordic model and the Nordic welfare state is often used as an example, especially in right-wing politics, as something that should be avoided. Or on the left, it's looked at as something that we should strive for. So it's interesting to not only have everybody in Denmark have opinions about America and American politics, but to come home and have people talking to us about what they think of Denmark. And we get really defensive of uh, those critiques from people in America. Yeah, I think one of the interesting things with the values clash too is that it really sometimes makes you feel like you don't belong in two places, which is even worse than feeling like you don't belong in one place or only having one place. And it's kind of difficult because it kind of when you come back home, you realize you don't fit in in the same way that you did before. And obviously, as long as we live in Denmark, we're always going to be a little bit of outsiders. It's impossible to fully integrate into a society that you didn't grow up in. 
And so it's kind of a weird feeling that you get that's like, oh God, I don't belong anywhere. And it's important to kind of think about that and kind of be open with yourself and realize that you've changed and it's not that you don't fit in into the old world anymore. It's just that you find a different way to fit in now. Yeah, so those value, that value aspect of reverse culture shock is a tough one to grapple with. Uh, but you have to be honest with yourself and hold true to the values that you have because those don't change from any place to the next place. Yeah, and one of the cool things about Ben Franklin Parkway as well, you may notice behind us is the old Donnebro. It's lined by flags of the world, and that's part of the cultural concept of Ben Franklin Parkway, and one of the really neat things about Philadelphia is seeing all the flags of the world as you look down the parkway. One final reverse culture shock that we often feel when we're back in the U.S. is that everything moves at a much faster pace. We always kind of feel a little bit on edge, almost a little agitated, and like we're constantly rushing through life. Everything's instant, whether it's fast food or the fact that we have the ability to shop 24-7 uh, in 365 days a year at uh, a Walmart superstore or even the, the grocery stores are often 24 hours. And I don't know, it's a, it really affects the way that they live. You know, Denmark is a very um, laid back country and they value free time and they value time with family. And I think Americans could benefit from kind of slowing things down a little bit because we always sort of feel like, ah, when we come back and that reverse culture shock really gets us. Yeah, one of the things we noticed too is everyone is so over-programmed in the U.S. compared yeah. to in Denmark. We talked about in a number of videos how if you're going to be hanging out with Danes, you're only going to do one thing for a given night. You make plans with one you know, one group of friends or one party that you go to, you're not going to go to different things. In the U.S., people have total comfort having four or five things on their agenda for a given day, and they're bouncing from here to there to there. So it's one of the things that kind of we have to get used to back here again, that people are going to bounce in and out rather than making a, a whole set period of time with you when you're together. Exactly. We caught up for uh, brunch. We caught up into brunch with some friends yesterday, and it was even for somebody's birthday. And there were people that showed up um, you know, at the end of brunch and sat down and ordered food and came you know, an hour into the event. That would never happen in Denmark, but it's common. And also somebody uh, had arranged for transportation to be picked up and left uh, before everybody else. And it's very normal to do that in America, but for us it was kind of like, whoa, wouldn't do that in Denmark. No. Now the other thing with the pace of life is that as I'm sure you guys are all aware, it's a car culture over here. And that's one thing that's a different pace of life. You have to drive everywhere, especially when we're out at our parents' homes. Like, you have to drive. There's no public transit. And that's something that we're not used to. We're used to being able to hop on public transit or go ahead and take a bike somewhere. Whereas in the States, it's really hard to do that. Yeah, so coming from such a chill, hygge, laid-back atmosphere to America and the Northeast, especially a big city like Philadelphia, where we're really rushed everywhere we go, it's a bit of a culture shock and it takes a little bit of uh, easing back into. Now let's go do that final stretch over to Love Park and we'll wrap things up. And so now we're here in Love Park. We finally made it to this iconic spot in Philadelphia. And the reason we wanted to finish here is because the whole point of having two different countries and two different cultures that you linger between is that you love them both. And the beauty of living in two different places is it means that you get to have two different perspectives. And two different perspectives means you never run out of things to love about where you are. So even though there are challenges to reverse culture shock and going back and forth between two countries and two cultures, always focus on the love. So it was so nice taking you guys back with us to our old hometown of Philadelphia. It's really cool to share with you where we come from, so hopefully you get a better idea of who we are. And with that, it's the end. So make sure you like and subscribe. We'd love to hear your comments about our experience, your experience with Reverse Culture Shock, and your thoughts on Philadelphia. So thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.